Roubaix was my, my nemesis. It was kind of the race I'd loved. I'd watched a Sunday in Hell. Uh, I watched Tour de France and Paris-Roubaix. They were the two races that were the kind of while up pro cycling. And, uh, and yet, ironically, Roubaix was the race that I couldn't finish. It was, um, could do the Tour de France, done that. Only didn't finish once out of 12 times. Tour of Spain, Giro, no problem. Paris-Roubaix, couldn't do, couldn't do, couldn't do. Robbie Hunter, when I was at Milan San Remo, he said in the bus the day before, he said, David, what do you think, what do you think about doing uh, Paris-Roubaix this year? And I was like, it's not on my program. And my first thing was, well, it's not on my program, we haven't designed shoes for that. And I called Richard, who's helped me design the shoes, and said, Richard, um, might be doing Paris-Roubaix. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I haven't got time for this, I haven't got time. He's like, well, I didn't say that, I actually said, that's amazing. Uh, how long have we got? I said, I don't know, we'll call Niccolo and see how long we got. And it was like three days to design the shoes. Yeah, really? And Richard designed the shoes and I think less than that, I think he designed them in 48 hours. No sleep, blew off his other jobs, his normal architectural jobs, his design jobs and just did it. And uh, so that was it, it had to be done. And then, so since I was a kid, it was the first time I've ever gone to a race with the sole objective of finishing. And that's what Paris Bay was. And then 30 k from the finish, I was there was only 25 was left, and I thought this isn't so hard. I then punctured. So I thought I'm going to finish Paris Bay, which even the night before I was terrified of. I was really terrified as a 37 year old that maybe I wouldn't be able to finish Paris Bay. And the worst thing with Paris Bay is just once you give up, then the cobbles become really big. They become like mountains. You're bouncing around. My hands start to hurt really bad. But they've still got like little scars on them. That's like three weeks ago. Um, and I got to the velodrome and I came in on my own. I think it's all very romantic. Ah, oh, this is nice. I've done it. I finished Paris Bay and won the velodrome on my own. And came by, and the group just in front of me had stopped on the finish line after one lap. And I could see Nicole, and I thought, there's nothing more shameful than having to like ask guys coming through, having to unclip and ask guys to move out of the way so I could do my extra half lap to finish. <laughs> Actually, deep down I thought, you know what, when you're this far behind, maybe you don't have to do that extra half lap. Because <laughs> there could be this problem where it starts overlapping and you start crossing people up and you don't want people pushing through. So maybe you just do cross the line once and it's finished. And that's in my head, that's what I thought. And then I found out, I was standing there for a bit and then all of a sudden you become really tired. And then Mariah, who works the team, said, David, I, I don't think you finished. <laughs> I'm in the velodrome, this is enough. And then, uh, and then I think Mariah spoke to my wife and said, just talk to him and tell him if he doesn't do that extra half a lap, he's got a DNF. And I'd already handed off my helmet to Mariah, had my friend, had <laughs> done my stuff. 37 years old, my final year as a pro, finishing Paris-Roubaix, and this is what it is. I have to now put my helmet back on and go around an empty velodrome and finish Paris-Roubaix. Not the lap of honor with hands in the air, kind of like I finished with crowds applauding. It was like, no, now you just ride around it and do it so you don't have the DNF. And that's what Paris-Roubaix was for me.